can now present For the Record with Neil Heinen. A statewide democracy organization has new leadership, and he's a familiar face. We'll talk to him next on For the Record. Thanks for joining us. I'm Neil Heinen. And he is our friend Mike McCabe. Most recently, the executive director of We Are Many United Against Hate, founder of Blue Jean Nation, executive director of the Wisconsin Democracy Campaign, candidate for governor. It's hard to think of a better fit to lead our Wisconsin revolution, as we will learn as I welcome back to For the Record, Mike McCabe. Weren't you just on here a little while ago? <laughs> Not long, yeah. I want to. Thanks uh, for having me back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I want to. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about about the future of We Are Many in a bit. But, uh, and I'm embarrassed to admit, I, I was not familiar with our Wisconsin Revolution, Mike. What is it? Time to get familiar. Yeah. Yeah, our Wisconsin Revolution was inspired by Bernie Sanders' run for president in 2016. And, and people took seriously his call to try to revolutionize politics in this country and, and started organizing uh, locally here in Wisconsin and many other places around the country but our Wisconsin Revolution focuses on Wisconsin and and there were you know close to a dozen and a half chapters that emerged around the state okay um, but is there an our Vermont revolution or an our oh there there are many of these all across okay. the country okay. yeah yeah and and there's even a national organization called our revolution okay and, and uh, you know our group is sort of a state chapter of of that national network but um, but our focus is totally on Wisconsin and it's about revolutionizing Wisconsin and and uh, creating fundamental change in politics because you know we've got a system right now that is unresponsive to the voices of so many people and it's in and big money interests call the tune at the Capitol and and really dictate what our government ends up doing and we end up with a government that is doing the bidding of of wealthy and well-connected interests and, yeah. and ignoring what regular people want on so many issues well, and people are feeling so frustrated and agitated about that and and so this is an opportunity for people to to band together and do something about it. And now that all sounds very familiar, Mike, yeah. in terms of the work that you've been doing yeah. for, for years and years yeah. now. But what's the ongoing connection, if any, to Bernie Sanders and his campaign? Well, this is not the Sanders campaign. Okay. It's not a it, shadow campaign for, for Bernie. It, it was born out of his... It was inspired okay. by his 2016 Thank run. You. Okay. But it was never part of the 2016 run, and it's and it's not the Sanders campaign today. It was the issues that he was raising back then. And, and you know, people who are hearing this message about about needing to deal with economic inequality and needing to deal with the climate crisis and needing to deal with with what so many working people are struggling with. You, you had so many people in this country who used to make twenty five or thirty dollars an hour working in factories and then those factories started to be moved overseas or or those jobs were automated out of existence and and then people we're having a hard time finding anything that would pay more than 12 or 13, 14 dollars an hour. Their standard of living was cut in half and they couldn't get health care. So listen, when Bernie Sanders gets up there and talks about Medicare for all and talks about a living wage for every worker, that was music to a lot of people's ears. Right. And, and it got people yearning for something better and what they found is that is that in the political system they were not finding many opportunities to have those their voices heard and right. and uh, and so this is really about organizing people if if there are, you know there are these super PACs out there that are big bank accounts where where billionaires and corporations can dump money that they can't legally give directly to a candidate so they dump it in some bank account and that money is spent to benefit that candidate that's that's not what our Wisconsin revolution is about at all we're the exact opposite if we're gonna counter that big money if we're gonna counter the super PACs you gotta do it with organized people so it is membership driven it's about getting people together in their own own backyards in their own communities 
getting people organized to, to try to make a difference in, in our society and, and deal with the problems that, we've, that we face. How many chapters in the state? The, you know, there were... Or members? Or you know, there were... We've got about 11,000 people on our list. We got, uh, you know, close to a dozen and a half chapters sprung up. But some of them have sort of lost steam and, and grown more or less dormant. And so my job, and the reason I've been brought in, is to revive those that that have lost some energy and then form new ones and, and bring new people into, into this movement. Uh, you know, it, it, it is, it's gonna take organized people if we have any shot at countering organized money. And, uh, you know, and that's, that's the purpose. So. Just in, in, from your perspective, Mike, how do you position this um, in relation to uh, uh, the Wisconsin democracy campaign? The, the, you know, the, the remnants of Blue Jean Nation, the mm -hmm. League of Women Voters, Common Cause, these other yep. democracy organizations. Yep. What's the fit? Well, um, Wisconsin democracy campaign, of course, which I ran for 15 years, uh, is first and foremost a government watchdog. And it specializes in tracking the money in politics, shining light on those transactions, trying to combat corruption, advocating for reforms at the Capitol. Uh, and I hope to bring some of the, I, I undoubtedly will bring some of the spirit of the democracy campaign to this new work. But, but the democracy campaign doesn't endorse candidates, doesn't involve itself in elections, and our Wisconsin revolution can and will. Okay. So, you know, this is about, this is about identifying, recruiting, supporting people who can be transformational leaders, who can be change agents, and getting them run, to run for party positions, for, for local offices, for state offices. It, it, this is truly about trying to revolutionize Wisconsin politics. And, you know, so many voters, when, they, when it comes time to, to participate in an election, they don't like the choices that they see on the ballot. And they feel like they're holding their nose and they're choosing between the lesser of evils. Well, then it's up to the citizenry to say, okay, if we don't like our choices, let's find better choices. So it's about scouting and recruiting and developing new talent that can be fed into, into elections. Uh, you know, and it, 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 it's, it, it is about the grassroots organizing that is required to, to create some people power to counter the big money power. Yep. I've been thinking about government by the people, for the people, I want to I want to talk about that when we come back with Mike McCabe right after this. For the record, sponsored by MG&E, your community energy company. This season, take an incredible journey through 5,000 years of culture with Shen Yun. Discover why people are calling Shen Yun a visual feast, a pleasure to the ear, an epic tale, a must see. Shen Yun, returning to Overture Center for the Arts, February 4th and 5th. Tickets at shenyun.com slash WI. When looking for a TV and internet provider, we know you have a choice. This is Jessica. She still has satellite TV. Well, I get tons of HD. Spectrum has tons of HD, and we love Spectrum's 24-hour local news channel. Plus, we get exclusive access to premium original content with Spectrum Originals. I don't have that. Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-976-4499. Spectrum Internet starts at 200 megabits with no data caps and a free modem. We have to get Internet from another company, and it isn't nearly as fast. Spectrum Internet, $44.99 a month. I'd switch, but I'm stuck in a contract and would have to pay up to $480 to cancel. Spectrum has no contracts, and they'll pay up to $500 to help you out of yours. That's it. I'm switching to Spectrum. Get Spectrum TV and Internet from $44.99 a month each. Call 833-976-4499. Monday morning, Hattie is going to be tracking yet another possible round of snow during the work week. And with more flu cases coming in, we're looking at ways you can flu-proof your home. That and more local news starting at 4.30. See you then. Accurate news as it happens. Right here, where you live. Information that you can use. 
from the team you can trust. For more local stories that impact your life, News 3 Now. I am back with Mike McCabe, who is back on For the Record in his new role as the executive director of our Wisconsin Revolution when we are talking about this statewide democracy organization. So the, the, uh, the description, Mike, the mission statement, if you will, was to return democracy to government of the people, by the people. Uh, a colleague of mine, Dave Matthews, from the... Um, Kettering Foundation just wrote a piece recently, and he kind of looked at that statement and 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 posed. Uh, he suggested that it wasn't working. Government by the people is not working. Government, of, and he suggested that we need to reframe it as government with the people. Now, it kind of intrigued me. I mean, it, it's uh, it's sort of an intellectual argument, but are you know are we broken to the point where we are we are no longer government? of the people, for the people, by the people, and that we might need to rethink this in ways that perhaps our Wisconsin Revolution is doing. We, that's why we believe yeah. strongly that we need to revolutionize politics, because it's not with the people anymore, it's, it's it, at the people, exactly, that's probably it, what it, it is. Almost in spite of the people. Uh -huh. You know, and everybody senses it. You don't need an academic study to to confirm what people realize. They, they understand that they, their voices aren't being heard and that the will of the people is not being done in the halls of the nation's capital or the state capital on so many issues. They get that. But, you know, there was a, a major study done. One of the professors was from Northwestern University, the other from Columbia. They looked at actions taken by Congress and what they found was incredibly strong correlation between the actions that Congress took and the interests or the demands of wealthy interest groups. And what they found was a near zero influence by regular people. They, they, basically, they basically said that people have almost no noticeable impact on the decisions Congress makes. Congress is supposed to be a representative body. It's supposed to be of, by, and for the people. And of course, if you look at Congress, it, it isn't of the people. It, the members of Congress don't reflect America uh, economically or racially or in just about any way you, you care to slice it. It's not, it doesn't look like a representation of America. Uh, it's, it, you know, overwhelmingly, it's a, it's a body made up of millionaires, and right. most people out there are not millionaires. So it, and and then when it comes to why they make the decisions they make, they they are so often taking their cues from these very wealthy and well-connected interests and from the lobbyists, and they're not they're not doing the people's business. And so that that's that's a crisis, uh, and it's something I've worked on for decades to try to move us in a direction of tr more truly representative government. But, um, you know, the democracy campaigns work, which is vital and, and absolutely has to continue. Uh, I, I still felt that if we're, if we're going to make change, we have to do more than, than a group like the democracy campaign can do. We need to take that fight into the electoral arena. We, we, have, to, we have to be involved in elections to try to influence who gets in office, who is representative of the people. Uh, and that, that's a huge undertaking. That's a huge organizing task. It is, and it, and, and it brings us right into, you know, one of the one of the great conundrums of our time. I mean, you talk about all the reforms that you've talked about and, 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 and the jobs that you mentioned earlier that have been lost. Mike, those are all nonpartisan issues. I mean, those are issues that are affecting people, urban and rural and mm -hmm. any, any way you slice it. Uh, and, and, and yet the challenge of attracting bipartisan support to an organization like this or finding candidates in both parties that you might be able to support seems just daunting right now. And, but, but you find them where you can find them and, and get them to run where they are willing to run. Uh, and I, I don't worry at all about, about the, the part
partisan divide for, for the time being. I worry about finding people who can be transformational leaders and change agents and, and working to support their efforts and getting the citizenry more engaged. And if, if, if they get engaged in both parties, great. If they get engaged in one or the other, you know, you, you just take that, that effort where you can, where you can get it. Uh, and, and look, we're, we're at a point now where this country is going through three revolutions at once. That is bound to create political turmoil and social upheaval. But what's amazing is that, is that both parties don't want to touch those issues, the, the big issues. We're going through an economic revolution driven by globalization and automation and creating huge economic inequality. We're going through a social revolution where the dominant group in society is fast becoming a minority. That's causing huge divisions in our society, a growing rural-urban divide, a growing white-collar, blue-collar divide. And we're going through a, an ecological revolution that actually threatens life on this planet. And it's fascinating how many politicians regardless of party, don't want to touch those issues. Right. Now, the, I think that's what inspired people about Bernie Sanders. He was not only touching those issues, he was speaking powerfully to those issues. And I think in the end, that's what ended up getting Donald Trump elected, was that in the, in, in the absence of other answers, people were wanting answers about those three big problems, and we didn't have the kind of politics that could deal with those problems. And the president said, let's build a, a wall spanning the southern border and make Mexico pay for it. In the absence of other answers, people would, would grab onto that answer. It was and, a message, right? And let's slap tariffs on every product that comes into this country and use protectionist trade policies. In the absence of any other sort of solution to the economic inequality and the, and the economic revolution that we're going through, the globalization and the automation, people grabbed onto it. Right. The fact that the president was not afraid to touch those issues, I don't like the answers that he's offered. I personally think that they're the wrong answers for America. I don't think building the wall and trying to make Mexico pay for it is, is either achievable or desirable. I don't think protectionism is the right way for this country to go. But I get the fact that people were desperate for somebody to offer some kind of an answer to these big problems. We don't have the kind of politics needed to solve any of the biggest problems facing America. And, and we've got to create that kind of politics. And that, you know, we, we had better revolutionize our politics or we're, we're going to leave these huge problems unsolved. When we come back, I want to get your thoughts on um uh, on the makeup of the uh, of the membership of our Wisconsin Revolution, and particularly generational, with Mike McCabe when we come back right after this. Just talk a little bit. I'm a little old to count down the days, but my ski trip to Cascade Mountain with my cousin each year, so much fun. pretend like we are flying. Now, we really do. My dad and my uncle like that we still be <laughs> free. But Noah and I, we just have fun. See you there. At U.S. Cellular, we know you work hard. So we work hard to give you the best deals. Like a free smartphone when you switch. Plus unlimited data for $30 per month. So you can keep streaming, keep posting, keep hustling, and keep more of what you've earned. Switch to U.S. Cellular and get a free smartphone, plus unlimited data for $30 per month. Now that's fair. U.S. Cellular. Choose fair. Listen up. In 2016, a New Mexico House seat was decided by only two votes out of almost 14,000. In 2010, a state house race in Vermont was determined by one vote. In 2002, a Connecticut house seat was determined by just one vote out of more than 6,000. In 1994, a Wyoming state house seat vote ended in a tie. The winner, chosen at random, went on to become speaker of the state house. Your voice matters, use it. 
those pre-existing conditions are protected. A broken promise. Trump repeatedly tried to undermine coverage for 134 million Americans with pre-existing conditions. He just doesn't care if you have a pre-existing condition. He wants to deny you access to coverage. If he is re-elected, he'll keep trying to do that. And I think we can't let that happen. As president, Mike will lower costs and protect Americans with pre-existing conditions. I'm Mike Bloomberg, and I approve this message. Download the new Channel 3000 app and get alerted on your mobile device the minute news breaks. Wherever you go, be the first to know with Channel 3000. I'm back with the executive director of our Wisconsin Revolution, Mike McCabe. Um, so the, the, the idea of membership is just, it fascina fascinates me a, a across all of the organizations that we talked about, Mike, and, and many, many others. Who's joining, um, who's not, is it generational, is it cultural, is it, is it social? And, uh, you know, Wisconsin is changing so rapidly. And I, I, I'm, I'm fa I, you know, I love the idea that that the dominant population is not going to be uh, white, male, and wealthy a a anymore, and sort of stereotypically. But are you attracting young people? How do you attract young people? How do you attract people of color to an organization like this, where traditionally it's been, you know, these types of organizations have been viewed as somewhat um, white and, and older? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just getting started. Yep. But as I come in, what I see so far, uh, is too old, uh, too white, too urban, and too focused on the highly educated, people with advanced degrees. Right. What I don't see are uh, enough rural people. I don't, I don't see enough racial diversity. I, I don't see enough young people. I don't see enough people who might never have gone to college. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I grew up on a dairy farm, I, and, and I, so I, I feel like I've had the the real blessing of living across the rural urban divide. I've had a foot in both worlds. I, I've had an opportunity to spend a, almost half of my life living in the country, a little bit more than half of my life living in the city. And, and, and so I've, I've had that opportunity to live across the divide. And, and I see rural and urban people sort of getting more distanced from each other. And yet we've got so much in common. We've got so many common concerns and problems. Uh, so, you know, when we finish this interview, I'm getting in the car and heading to the North Woods right. and, and going to be speaking to people up in, in the Woodruff, Minocqua area. And, and, and then you, you got to go to inner city Milwaukee. You got to go to where the young people hang out, too. And so I've been having dozens of conversations with young people trying to figure out why don't they see... Uh, a, 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 this is a place for them to, why don't they want to join? Why don't they want to be part of this? And there's a hunger there. There's a tremendous hunger among young people. But they, they also don't want to go to meetings with a whole bunch of, of white-haired people and just talk about, you know, sort of highfalutin ideas and academic kind of, kind of concerns about about how we deal with these problems they 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 want a different vibe well it's our job to to get them in positions of leadership and help them shape an organization so it it has that youthful vibe to it and it's something where, that they can get excited about and, and want to belong to and that's that's a part of the challenge here. Yeah. all all of this is work to be done Obviously, this is a hugely important election year. I mean, what better time to be in this role and with this organization? Um, and coincidentally, there is a national convention in Milwaukee this year. Um, what kind of opportunity do you see there for our Wisconsin revolution um, during the DNC convention? Um, you know, I, I know that we'll have people involved there. We'll have people wanting to um, hold events and 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 uh, call attention to, to issues during the convention. And there's an opportunity to make a difference in 2020, but I really want this organization to have a longer term vision and a longer view. Uh, I, I think one of the mistakes that we make so often is, is we just go from one election 
and try to influence that election. We get frustrated and we don't feel Two-year like windows for everything. Everything. Yep. And, yep. And, we, and then we feel dissatisfied, and then before you know it, we're right back doing the same thing over and over again. And, and it, it does become insanity after a while to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. As the we, definition goes. We keep getting the same outcome and we keep feeling like, wow, that didn't feel very satisfying. We, you know, we didn't get the change we desired. And then two years later, we're right back doing the same doggone thing again. Well, Mike, I, I, it, it, and I want, I want us to think a, a little bit more creatively and, and, and have a little bit longer well, view. Is that, is that where you marry the government reform work with the electoral political reform work? I think so. Yeah. I think so. I, and I do see it as a marriage. The, I felt so strongly about the work I did at the Democracy Campaign, and I felt passionate ab about that work for close to 20 years, and, and then felt really strongly that it needed to continue. But I also saw what the Democracy Campaign couldn't do. And I, I, I saw some missing pieces to the puzzle there. And, and I've tried my best with Blue Jean Nation and with a run for statewide office and now with our Wisconsin Revolution. I'm, I'm trying to, to see if we can't put some of those pieces into place as well. You, you know, that, that the watchdog work is important. Shining light in dark places is important. Advocating for structural reform is important. Working to try to influence what's going on at the Capitol is important. But you've also then got to focus on what happens in elections. You can't ignore those uh, if, you, if we're going to bring about the kind of change that people desire. Anybody who's interested, Mike, can go to the website and join our Wisconsin Revolution. Sure can. You can sign up for membership on, online. Yeah, we ask people to do $5 a month or, or we give people a discount if they want to do it on an annual basis, 50 bucks a year, <clears throat> and that makes you a member. And, and, but, you know, if people can give more than that, terrific. But if they can't give that, we still want their involvement. I'm looking forward to following this, Mike. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. We're going to come back and wrap up for the record right after this. Building a community energy company for the future through the power of working together, committed to cleaner, more sustainable energy, driven by innovation, fostered by shared values. Energy2030together.com. Don't just get deals, get steals at Ashley Home Store's giant sale and clearance event. We've shipped hundreds of clearance items, special buys, and floor samples from our warehouse to our store. Save as much as 80% off all furniture and mattresses while they last. Plus, take a bonus 10% off our sale prices and 18 months to pay. And save up to 70% off a huge selection of top brand clearance mattresses. Bring your truck and trailer for immediate pickup or delivery is available. Only at Ashley Home Store's sale and clearance event. These folks, they don't have time to go to the post office. They have businesses to grow, customers to care for, lives to get home to. They use stamps.com. Print discounted postage for any letter, any package, any time, right from your computer. All the amazing services of the post office, only cheaper. Get our special TV offer, a four-week trial, plus postage and a digital scale. Go to stamps.com slash deal and never go to the post office again. The new iPhone 11 runs on Straight Talk without a contract and a plan that's up to half the cost of big carriers. With the new ultra-wide camera, your shareable moments are ultra-shareable. Because you're on a network that's more than just big talk. The new iPhone 11. Now get the unlimited plan for just 45 bucks a month on America's best 4G LTE networks. Straight Talk Wireless, everything for less. MG&E, building a community energy company for the future through the power of working together. Committed to cleaner, more sustainable energy. Driven by innovation. Fostered by shared values. Energy2030together.com. My thanks to Mike McCabe and to you for joining us. We'll see you next week on For the Record.